Hello, everybody. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Living Room Community Art Studio's Wednesday live stream pop-up art studio, our virtual space to connect, create, and just hang out with one another. Now, I'm going to be here for the next hour and a half from 2 p.m. until 3.30, roughly, unless we get into a really good conversation, then you might, I might not be able to leave. Oh, hello, Teresa. Hello, hello, hello. It's so good to see you joining us. Thank you. How are you doing? Gosh, there's so many people in the community I miss seeing in person, but it's so great to know that you're here hanging out and spending some time with me in this studio. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, what do folks need to know about today? Well, I guess I've been, uh, I don't know, what have you guys been thinking about? What do you, what's on your minds? I've been thinking about transitions and beginnings and ends. Hello, B. So great to see you. Welcome to the live stream. Oh, and it's good to hear that you're doing good, Teresa. It's, uh, these are interesting times. And I think I'm, I'm trying to be very gentle with myself whenever uh, I find myself being surprised by new feelings or reoccurring feelings, things that I thought that I dealt with and, you know, was done. No, these are interesting times, so I leave space for taking care of myself in that way. And I think taking care of myself means that I'm going to be revisiting things throughout this process, whatever this process looks like. So having folks like you hanging out with me along the journey sure makes it a lot easier, uh, a lot more, I don't know, just lovely. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so safe space rules as always, just like we were in the studio. Uh, for folks who are familiar with the studio, there's already a few of you here, volunteers, wonderful supporters. Please feel free to welcome folks that join the live stream uh, or who are chatting. I may not always see everyone who joins in the chatting or I definitely don't see the people who click and watch without saying hello. Doesn't mean that I don't love you and I don't appreciate you being here. I certainly do. Um, but I can't see everything with the platforms that I'm working on. So I might miss a comment here and there. Uh, if I do, just, you know, be persistent. Keep letting me know, keep putting it out there. And hello, Shelly, welcome. And if you keep on saying hi and, uh, and asking your question or sharing your comment, someone else can flag me on it or Perhaps I'll see it finally. And for those of you who just want to sit back and enjoy, watch or listen while you're doing something else, that's a completely fine as well. You're welcome to use this time, this creative energy that we're co-creating here to do what you need to do in whatever way feels right to you. So yeah, having folks along the way be makes it so much more easy, easier, even if it's just virtually, right? Virtually counts too. And like for some folks when they're, they're listening uh, or watching but not joining in, that's okay. You can be making art with me. You can be doing something completely different. You could be sorting laundry or making your grocery list or working on homework, whatever feels right for you. For those of you who want to be joining in with my art, whatever I'm doing, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but maybe something that I'm doing inspires you. You may not have the exact same materials on hand, but please feel free to reach for whatever materials you do have around you. And I guess we're kind of jumping in with the spirit of creation, even though we might not have exactly the same supplies on hand. Drawing today, Shelly's doing some drawing. I'm gonna be doing a bit of drawing too to start out, Shelly, and uh, doing some things I haven't done in a very long time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So please folks, as we're working today, be supportive of one another, encouraging, respectful, negotiate that consent whenever possible, even in a virtual space. And as you're being kind and supportive to everyone else, please remember to be kind and supportive to yourself as well. That inner critic can get awfully loud, especially if you're spending time on your own. If your inner critic is being annoying, just let somebody know, let me know, let one of our fabulous community members know. You're not alone in that process. And I'm sure someone can help you talk back to that critic, understand what it wants. If it has nothing constructive to say, uh, let me know. I will grab it and I will symbolically throw it outside the studio, the, the virtual studio. Or, or as last week we decided, we could also delete it. So I will symbolically delete that inner critic and it will be back. It always is. But maybe next time it comes back, it'll be a little kinder, right? <laughs> 
Oh, Shelly, I'm glad you're loving the pop-up stuff. We've had a lot of fabulous feedback. And uh, regardless of what happens in the future, this will be continuing. It, the response has been so amazing. And what, are, what else are folks working on? B is working on, yes, a collage. Collaging the covers of your sketchbooks. Yeah. It's when you get a new sketchbook and it just, the cover just kind of stares at you. Yeah, you need to um, give some personality to that thing so it comes alive and it becomes a part of your creative relationship. And Shelly's actually out of town. You're in Bowmanville. Welcome. Well, welcome to Bowmanville. Bowmanville can be, that's a beautiful place. We have a lot of community members living out that way. So hello to everyone out in Bowmanville way. And hello to everyone else who might be joining us from all over the, over the place within Durham region, but from all around the world as well. It's been such an extraordinary experience connecting with people that I've never met in person before. Um, I appreciate you being a part of our creative community so much more than you realize. And, you know, for anyone who's joining in, even if you're watching afterwards when the live stream has finished, if you're watching the archived live stream, just thank you to everyone for being a part of this creative space that we've made. Your contribution is felt and your presence is appreciated. All right, folks, shall I get started now as well? I thought one of the things I'd work on just to warm up, uh, I might do some contour line drawing, right? So, gosh, remembered learning this way, way, way back in, uh, I guess, art. I didn't really go to art school. I was raised in an artistic family. So I was really lucky that I experienced a lot of different things early on in my life. And got a lot of arts education, kind of just picked it up along the way, I think, like a lot of folks. Ah, you're not missing anything, Shelly. I'm glad you're here. But if you have to leave, you know, that's all right. Yes, so folks who are watching, uh, sometimes I think people feel like they have to watch the whole thing in one sitting to be a part of it. You don't have to. If you can only stay for a few minutes or half an hour or an hour, or if you want to dip in in the middle and come back later, that is completely fine. You do you. You're the boss of you. You know what you need right now, today. So just feel free to do that. My feelings won't get hurt, I promise. <laughs> just knowing that you're here even for a little bit, that's enough. And really, again, it's about what you need. So honoring that, your personal journey that you're on is the most important thing. But I'm glad you're here, Shelley. Um, yes, so back to just the thought of transition and school. Uh, didn't go to art school, learned a lot of stuff along the way. I went to theater school, um, which is a kind of art school, I suppose. But uh, we're coming to kind of an end of, it's a, a little bit of an ending with the living room with regards to placement students. Every time around this year, we wrap up our relationship with our placement students who are ending their school term. And social stu like service worker students will be wrapping up in a couple of weeks. So... There have been some familiar faces and voices and presences along the way that we'll be saying goodbye to in the next little while. And I've just been thinking about how lucky and how, how, how grateful I am to all the students that have been a part of the Living Room's journey up to this point. And the students that have been helping, this term in particular, where we've been working completely online with no in-person connection, and there's been a lot asked of them and I'm really proud of the work they've done. I'm really proud of the journey they've been on and the relationships they've built with community members. So I suppose uh, today thematically I'm just reaching back to things I've learned in the past from other great teachers, whether it's happened in a classroom or it's happened in community. Most of the, the most precious lessons that I've learned or witnessed in my life have come from predominantly community, I think. Friends, family, strangers, the people who've passed through the studio, the people who join me here regularly are regulars. Um, but it's got me thinking just about all the things I've learned and perhaps things I haven't done in a while. So Shelley, I'm going to join you in a little bit of drawing just to warm up a little bit and uh, do a little bit of contour drawing, which is one of those things I think I must have picked up an art class in high school. 
And I'm not gonna do it right, guys, because it's a living room style, so again, no perfection allowed. So during this live stream, I encourage you to remember that as well with whatever you're creating or working on at home. No perfection allowed, okay? Just let that process take over, give space for that process and let it, let it in, just wrap all around you and take you to that, that safe, comfortable, sacred, creative space, whatever that might look like to you. And I think the idea behind contour drawing, if I'm remembering somewhat correctly, although if imperfectly, is the idea that you're looking at something in your creative space that's been set up or just happens to be lying around. Maybe it's a person and you put the pen down to paper and you just draw. So I'm not going to be seeing any comments right now for a little while because I'm just trying to look at the thing I'm trying to draw. And the idea is that you Continue to draw without lifting your pen up. So you're working on lines, shapes, forms, getting the sense of whatever it is you're creating down, which is another fantastic way to kind of work around that inner critic as well, at least for me, because I know I have to just give myself a break and trust that whatever emerges will work. And I think what's exciting about this kind of process as well is that you get really some really fascinating lines and forms coming out. There's an artist, I'm trying to remember her name. Why can't I remember her name? Maybe I'll post her afterwards, post it afterwards, but uh, she came to art quite late in life and worked with entirely contour draw, drawing styles and she do portraits of people and landscapes, these fantastic, fantastic drawings, these art works of art, completely self-taught. But I guess the wonderful thing about contour drawing again is it's a direct connection to your brain, your brain space and your body space as well. Because as you see today, I've my tremors are really acting out. So the control I have over what my hand is trying to do is lessened. So whenever my tremors act up, I just gotta, that's another interesting piece to dialogue with, just let them be. Let them have their space, let them have their say, because there's nothing I can do about it anyways. And trust that whatever's, whatever comes out is meant to be. Let's see. I think I'd like to keep experimenting with contour drawings as well and get into some portraiture, maybe some self-portraiture. It's been a long time since I've drawn myself. That's a weird thing to say, I suppose, but... Hey, yeah, shout out to all the amazing placement students, absolutely. And they were amazing. I'm glad that folks can recognize that. It, well, you know, community is made, places and communities are made out of people, not things. So whatever student, whichever student, or volunteer too, or vol we have amazing volunteers. And everyone makes the space what it is. Without that amazing team of people, the living room certainly would, wouldn't be the same. Uh, yes. Oh, pen came off paper. Ah, hello, Peter. Welcome. So what am I going to do here? Let's get my pen back on the paper then. Let's go here. Yeah. Let's give some texture. It's fascinating. I don't know I'm revisiting a lot of the old techniques that I've let go of over the years or things that I've incorporated into other projects. Um, 
I guess part of the idea when you're training to do something so specifically, whatever, regardless of what art form it is, part of what you do is you learn it so that you can let it go. You learn the rules so you can break them, so to speak. Um, <laughs> what a lovely little strange contour drawing this is. Oh my goodness. It's something. <laughs> but I I think I love the wonkiness. I was thinking about my the artwork I made last week, which is just hanging out over here. This lovely uh what did I start referring to it as? The onion heart. I think that was Carlos who maybe named it that or helped me reframe the idea of an onion. Uh, and I'm really enjoying the things I've been creating uh, with my non, like with my left hand, my non-dominant hand. I've been enjoying the shapes and the lines and the colors that emerge when I'm pushing my brain into a slightly awkward place where it can't be perfect, where I'm actually embracing the things about myself that I normally, the perfectionist in me normally struggles with in some ways, or wishes somehow were different. And I'm actually beginning to really love the style of things, to really love the aesthetic, the creative voice that's emerging from those places, right? So I encourage everyone to give that a go. If you haven't done it in a long time, choose something, just pick something in the space around you, grab a pen and do a little contour drawing. And as soon as I find out or remember who that artist is, I will post them in the comment thread below. And you can enjoy her work. Again, I think she started drawing in, when she was in her 80s, maybe, and built up such a prolific body of work, this contour drawings of people, places, things, exceptional works of art. And no one taught her anything. She just decided she was going to do it and became this exceptional, expressive voice in the world. Love it. <sighs> but yes, tremors, oh, no, they're not so bad. They've gotten a little bit better now. Yeah. It's good to, uh... now Peter, you asked a question. I'm not sure what it is. A refrig Is that a refrigerator or something? I'm not sure if that, what the question is. Could you ask it again? That would be fantastic, so I know. Oh, you don't, yeah, don't usually do contour drawing. Usually doing signs and other stuff. And I remember, Peter, you showed us some images of the signs you worked on in one of the coffee room chats. If you want to post one of the signs you work on here in the chat so other people can see the kind of signs you create and what they look like, that would be amazing. And you never know. There might be some other folks out there who like doing signs or uh, perhaps hand lettering and things like that. And maybe there'll be an opportunity for a collaboration along the way some way. My drawing. Ah, yes. No, you know what it is? What I was drawing. Let me bring it back for a moment. It's actually, let's see if I can do this here. It's a contour line drawing of my watercolor set and the water jar for my, uh, for my painting today. <laughs> and I love it. It's wonky. Um, it's wonky and it's wonderful. And so, uh, yeah, wonky and wonderful. That's the way to be, folks. Why not? And if you want to post, if you do want to post, you can, I think, taking a picture with your phone, your, if you have a smartphone, I know that's an easier way to do it. Um, because if, if you go onto Facebook or into the live stream chat, there's, there might be a photograph, like a little icon along the bottom of wherever you're replying or commenting, where you can uh, click on the camera and then you can upload a photograph to go there, I think. Um, if not, then you might be able to do it after the live chat has ended and things might be a little clearer there. Yeah. Now, again, just revisiting things that students have done. One of our placement students from last semester, we had some fantastic ones. So shout out if Mariella or Gilbert or, oh my goodness, I could go through everyone. Uh, Raylene, there's so many wonderful people we've had along the way. Uh, Gilbert had actually started an activity on Facebook where every 
I think we tried to do it every night for a while, but after a while it became every other night and slowed down a little bit near the end of the placement, where we did something really simple with community. Every night he'd post uh, a picture of the color of his day. So it was a way for him to relax and ground himself and reflect on everything that he'd been through through that day and just kind of let go of it, acknowledge it and let go of it. And so he'd fill a circle, he'd draw a circle on the page and then he'd fill it with color, the colors of his day. These were some of the colors of my days that I did during that time. And it's funny, I've learned so much from all of the students that I've worked with and am working with right now, as well as the fabulous volunteers and community members. Um, but this is an activity that I've kept up with here, there and everywhere. I found it really relaxing and really grounding. And when I look, there's something really special about looking back over the series of these. I don't know if anyone else out there, I mean, if you keep an art journal or a diary of some sort that you might have a similar experience where you can kind of track how things have been for yourself. Um, I don't always have time to read over journals, journal entries that I've written, but I really do love the simplicity and elegance of this, being able to get a visual indication of where my mood was at or what kind of day I was having or what kind of week I was having. And again, not everything, everything has its, its own little uh, mystery about it. It's communicating something very specific to me, but um, yeah, it's interesting. I'd love to know what you guys think about them or if you've been doing anything similar over this time. Yeah. So I'm going to create some mood circles today and I might make a slightly larger one and take my time filling it out. So let me just throw that up there in that corner and grab some watercolor paper. So B has a new sketchbook. That's exciting. Is there anything else that folks are working on that they'd like to share? Let's, I'm just gonna dig out some supplies here from my mini studio shelf. Let's see if I can use this as a circle. Can I? Oh, it's a little too big maybe. Let's see, what are the round things? Do, oh, hello. A dusty lid. Perfect. Prim, welcome. Hello, hello. How are you doing? How are things over there in the UK right now? Big question. Feel free. You don't have to answer it. That's a nosy question. It's an interesting time. All of us, it's like we've had little windows into one another's lives in a very different, unique way. Gives us a chance to consider someone else's experience a lot more deeply when we're all experiencing something similar, if that makes sense. What do I want to do here? Maybe not with that, let's see. So I'm just gonna make this circle. Let's see. This is a lid to my jar, one of my jar, jars of stuff. <laughs> my jar of stuff from the studio. So this, let me just, I'll bring this in super quickly. I don't know if you can see this here. This is one of the jars that I keep uh, of things I bring home in my pockets at the end of the day from the studio. Now I haven't, uh, it's all sorts of random stuff, beads, bottle caps, buttons, bits and pieces of stuff uh, that have fallen off or broken or, you know, the things I find on the floor and I, I'm like, oh yeah, I'll put that away. I'll put that away in a few minutes. And then I just end up putting it in my pocket. And at the end of the day, um, I had to come home and create a space where I could empty my pockets just because I was forgetting the stuff was in there and then it would go in the wash and that's not good and all blah, 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 blah. Uh, so yeah, there's all of these things from the studio, bits and pieces, little bits of magic, uh, odds and ends. I have at least three jars like this and my go, oh, oh, that's, oh. We could use those things. Jewelry findings, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can make use of that. Um, my dream, I think, oh, for some fortune cookie fortunes. What does it say? Hey, yeah, don't let others try to stop you from doing what is right. 
a little bit of wisdom from the stuff jar, the studio stuff jar. Well said. I won't. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, in my dreams, with all this extra time I think I'm going to have, I, I had an idea that I would go through my studio stuff jars and do a project for each thing that I pulled out of the jar and kind of document and archive everything that had come home in my pockets from the studio and create art projects with them. Don't know. Don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, maybe one day. We shall see. We shall see. <laughs> And hello, folks who are just joining the stream now. And Peter, yeah, uploading. Yeah, and Peter, you can send images to me later for sure, and I can post them in the chat. Oh, a sign for the living room. Interesting. I'm so excited. Yes, I'd love to learn more about that. And Prin, working on a commission for one of our nature parks. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Been testing, but I'm enjoying the testing. Testing my art. Testing one's art is always really. That's an exciting time. I think we don't give ourselves enough time to kind of incubate ideas and develop our processes, whether it's in relation to projects that we have or our own creative process. You know, the discovery, the, you know, that part of the journey, the experimentation is uh, so, so, so important. And again, I think maybe it's another strange curse of the commodification of creativity where we begin to expect certain things of ourselves or we find a style for ourselves that works or something that we like to do and we just do that and maybe we do it because we enjoy it which is fantastic maybe we do it because that's what other people expect of us to do um when i first became an actor i loved uh, i was <laughs> training to be an actor is such an interesting process any other actors in here feel free to chime in about this but I grew up in a time where there was still funding for theater and funding for rehearsals and exploration. Um, now things happen very quickly in the arts. You're lucky if you get a week or two for rehearsal uh, in a project. But at the time, uh, I was reading about all these other actors uh, and part of their creative process was this research period where they got funding to research characters, to research time periods, to explore uh, different aspects of the world they were about to step into. So I have, I've, I have in my, this expectation in my brain that that is a part of the creative process and it doesn't quite match up with the reality all the time. People don't always want to fund you to explore and research and develop, but if you don't have to rely on that funding, there's no reason why we can't do it for ourselves. Take ourselves to school and our own interesting ways, give ourselves time, time uh, to practice, to shape, to learn, to try things, to fail. Failure can be such a great teacher. <laughs> it really can be. That's me speaking from experience. Um, it's a really beautiful thing to learn what you don't want or what you don't need or what you can't accomplish right now and set your you know, sights on something that can help you get to where you want to be. I don't know. So I'm just, yeah, responding to these comments. Hmm, things are cool in the UK, but still odd though. Yeah, um, I think it's, we're experiencing a similar thing here. I don't want to speak for everyone. So folks in Ontario or Canada, feel free to chime in from wherever you're at. But things seem managed here in relation to the pandemic, but it feels like a gamble all of the same. Um, and, uh, I think everyone, we're just trying to do what we can do to get by. And so things are good, but strange, strange. Yeah, I can relate to that, the strangeness. And uh, one moment at a time, one day at a time. And fortune cookie, Peter says fortune cookie. Oh, so there is a, a way of making, Peter says there is a way of making a fortune cookie on paper. I've done that before. Oh, in relation to the thing that I just, I pulled out of my stuff jar, of course. I would love to see that, Peter. I need to figure out a way that we can have takeovers here, or maybe community members can come in and instead of my face being here, it will be your face and you can share something that you love. Uh, yeah, I'll put a pin in that and revisit it. <laughs> hey, Lisa, good to see you, welcome. And for all the folks who might be joining us in the live stream today, 
Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the chat we're having. It started off with thoughts of transitions and ends and beginnings and considering that our beautiful placement students will be wrapping up their time with us in the next couple of weeks. So the next couple of weeks, there's so much, many mixed feelings about that. Uh, just really lucky to have so many amazing community members, volunteers, um, allies working with us out there from afar or directly with us here in the living room, in the virtual living room. So I moved on from students to learning, to revisiting things I've learned. And I think now it's venturing into things I haven't learned yet, things that we are still learning, things that we're experimenting with, exploring, pushing our creativity a little bit or expanding our concepts of what can happen. I wish there was funding for it, B. There was once upon a time. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, maybe there will be one day soon, again. Uh, but in the meantime, nothing's stopping us from exploring, trying new things, testing out ideas or concepts with what we do. That's like studio time in your own personal space can be, or at, like out in an art hive as well, that can be really, it can be such a precious time because that experimentation, I think there's still, and Prin, maybe you can speak to this since you're in the, that process now, but uh, it's an absolutely necessary component to exploring new ways of saying things and making space for new voices to be heard, with, even within our own work, like our own internal kind of voices. But I think there's also a lot of fear that comes along with trying new things. Um, and I think B was, yeah, the failure. <laughs> I love that B. Failure isn't the opposite of success, it's part of it. Yeah, absolutely. And yet, I think we still find, oh, still sometimes it can feel so vulnerable, transparent, to uh, step into that unknown space or to try the thing we haven't tried before, to say the thing we haven't said before. I think each one of us has our own relationship with that. And what am I doing here? For those of you who might just be tuning in now, I'm revisiting an exercise, an activity that one of my students helped develop. The color of my day activity where I'm just filling a circle with color about how I'm feeling, what I've been feeling today. I'm not trying to get into why certain colors are being laid down. I'm not trying to unpack it or edit it as I go. I'm just going to let it be. Um, I'm just going to let it happen. I'm going to just keep working on it until it feels right. Or feels that it's, it is what it's meant to be. Because sometimes it's important to let feel, things feel not right if they're not meant to be right. Does that make sense? Maybe, right? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, and Peter, yes. So Peter's saying you are both an artist and a perf Oh yeah, in performer and theater, if you don't mind me asking, Mary. Yes, um, I, early on from one of my very first teachers, the beautiful Judy Silver, um, who worked with a lot of young actors and performers out there. She herself was a fantastic actress um, and I remember her telling me, I applied to a school, a theater, I think I was 18, and I didn't get in, because I think it was one of the big ones in England. Yeah, I thought I was all that and a bag of chips. And I didn't get in, and I was so disappointed. And she was very patient with me all the time. And she just explained, and this phrase has stuck with me forever, and I think teachers everywhere have shared similar things with their students of students of humaning or students of life or creativity. Um, she reminded me that the art, art is not a narrow path. The arts is not a narrow path. There are so many things that come onto that path and there are so many ways that path diverges and comes back again. Um, and when you live a creative life, you do many things. Uh, you follow, you sort of seek out all these exciting bits and pieces that bring color, that bring life to the things you're excited about. And for me, one of those things is performing. Um, theater I haven't had a chance to do in a long time. 
and at least in like four or five years. Uh, film and TV is something I really enjoy doing, although it's a very complicated industry. Uh, and that's, again, theater and film both are things that aren't as easy to do during a time of a global pandemic because they involve people collaborating and working with one another in very intimate ways, literally, you know, in one another's faces, in one another's spaces, and uh, not as easy to do during this time. But yeah, I... I love storytelling and acting for me on a selfish note was just one way I could, I've been fast, I've always been fascinated with the idea of, um, I think what Susan Sarandon calls, what did she call it? Um, oh no, I, I, this is usually at the tip of my tongue. Uh, oh, I can't quote her appropriately right now. So I'll just talk around the general idea of enforced empathy, the idea of focusing and deciding to try to understand why another person is the way they are, why they make the decisions that they do, how they make their choices and deal with the consequences of those cho choices in relation to one another. And that's like, for me, acting is really that. I learn, it gives me an opportunity to learn about other people and step into their shoes as best I can. And in the process, what I'm actually doing is not so much understanding them but understanding myself and hey Annie yay oh thank you Annie already loving the colors yeah they can mean so many different things and uh, when I'm understanding things about myself through another person's journey that's the most important thing I learn how to draw out those things that I come I, like kind of as an actor I learn to understand and know myself much more than anyone else, I suppose. But in that process, I can also manage myself a lot more effectively. So in, you know, as an actor, I'm drawing upon my own experiences to find common ground with that of the character I might be playing. Uh, in life, those skills come in handy because I, I, I see everyone as a potential storyteller, as someone that I could understand more effectively as a pathway to understanding myself more effectively if that makes any sense. That's a very long-winded answer to Peter's question, yeah. Um, actor first, I think, storyteller everywhere. Storyteller always, before I was an actor. Storyteller, story consumer, story appreciator. And that's one of the things I love uh, about the studio and the art hive space in general. For me, it's the place where people share their stories. Um, yeah. And let's revisit what B was saying about failure because that's part of an actor's life as well, constantly being rejected. Uh, yeah, failure, B says, fa uh, failure still scares the crap out of me, but I'm get getting better at coping with it. Yeah, it's the how we manage that failure, absolutely. And what we, you know, what we take away from it. Are we interpreting it as it being ourselves as the failure? Uh, or just something that didn't work in the process of becoming or creating something in our lives. Um, again, that product-centered idea of creativity, whether it's creative humaning or, you know, the things that we make to share or make to sell for a living, to make other people happy. There's so much involved in what we do. And I, you know what, I... I I don't mean to oversimplify any of this stuff either, or, or perhaps um, I mean, it's not just, oh, what is it? It's not just as simple as get out there and create, folks, <laughs> because it is scary. And I think maybe it should be a little bit scary. Um, there's a preciousness involved in this and getting to know ourselves and becoming familiar with how we work and what we create and why we want to create it and what happens if? What happens if I don't do it the way I want to do it? What happens if I make something for someone and they don't like it? What happens if I make something and I don't like it? There's so many questions in there. There's so many potential, there's so many answers perhaps. Um, and maybe none of them are wrong answers. It's just an ongoing dialogue we have with ourselves when we're, when we choose to live a creative life or move through life in a creative way. 
Let's see. Oh, and Peter, well, one day, you know, maybe one day I'll do something about, I'll, I'll chat with folks about being an actor, uh, an actor to art. They're tied together. I don't think it's a journey from one to the other. I think they are completely enmeshed. And I think that's part of the one, one way I keep healthy um, as an actor is maintaining some kind of creative visual art process and writing and journaling a written, like a, a creative writing process as well. Um, it's getting more and more complicated for me when people say, what do you do? I don't know what I do anymore. I don't know. I really don't know because I'm not just one thing. And I think most of us can say the same. We're not just one thing. It's not like smack a label on me and you know who I am. We're all, we're just, we are so many things. We are complex. We are flawed. We are weird. We are wonderful. We are becoming constantly. We are in a process of becoming our entire lives. And yeah, the transition from one form to another, letting, you know, I might be making money off of this one day. Um, I might be doing this more frequently at this period in my life, but I'm still both. I'm not, I don't have to stop being an actor because I'm running an art hive. I don't have to start, stop being a social practice artist because I get a job doing a Kellogg's commercial. I think, not that that's my favorite kind of acting, but I'm open to it, folks. If anyone out there is watching, um, <laughs> I think saying yes to the things that make us feel good to help us move forward in some way that get us excited and maybe even a little bit scared, that's a beautiful thing. But it doesn't mean you have to choose between one or the other. I think it's just important to know what you want in this moment right now so you can focus on it and feel like you're invested in the moment wholeheartedly, if that makes sense. And Prin was, so Prin's saying, I hit a massive wall with this project. Oh, the project you're working on now, the commission. It's been a battle of confidence and letting some elements go. Yeah, not thinking too much and stripping back on your detail. That's what a beautiful process to go through as complicated and difficult as that must have been. Knowing how to let go, when to let go, when you know, you're pushing against a wall that isn't meant to br like be a breakthrough right now. And perhaps there's another place you could be going that would help you move through that to the other side of that wall. Yeah, it's really every creative process is involves a, a process of questioning ourselves, doesn't it? And coming face to face with elements of ourselves that maybe are not always as comfortable to deal with. Um, Maybe not always in a very extreme way, but even simple, so like seemingly simple things we do can confront us in unexpected ways. Um, but it's interesting, that letting go process, letting some elements go, yeah, and not thinking too much about it, that's a really interesting thing. Being questioning, active, and not sitting in that and holding on to it. And Prin about failure. You're right about failure. I am, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with some artists I respect on this project and I was questioning why I'm amongst them but realized I too am worthy. Now that is a really interesting thing. That sounds a little bit, if you don't mind me saying, correct me if I'm wrong, Prin, it sounds a little bit like that strange kind of imposter syndrome uh, many of us will have from time to time. The idea of like, do I belong here? Why am I with those people? The othering of our colleagues, but also kind of the marginalizations of, our, of ourselves that can happen from time to time. Um, yeah, and that difficulty of not being able to recognize our own value when we're in the middle of something or our own, what we are bringing to a project. Because we're in the middle of it, we can't, we don't have perspective, the same perspective that others do. And chances are the other people that you're working with might be looking or observing what you're doing and considering the exact same thing about themselves. It's, it's fascinating. And B saying, I, I think living creatively means having to be flexible in a lot of areas and getting familiar with shades of gray. Yeah, again, breaking away from that sense of all or nothing, the, the, the binary of things, um, finding a certain kind of peace with, oh, there was a really good quote that I found this morning from, uh, oh, I'll dig it up to share in the post afterwards. 
just the idea of learning how to live with ambiguity and be comfortable with that strangeness, with the being in between. What a skill, what a skill, especially in days like we're living with now where we don't know what tomorrow will look like. We don't know what next week will look like. It's become really challenging to make plans for ourselves. Uh, yeah, and then that's interesting too, Prince saying, I had to search myself and your approach but without diluting your art, without diluting your creative voice. Yeah. And that imposter syndrome sneaking up, you're not alone there. You're not alone. And it's connected to so many things. I mean, I'd be interested to know what people, why people, what people think of, like, why is it as artists that, why it is we compare ourselves to other people and why when we compare ourselves to other people, it's always in an unfavorable light. I mean, maybe not our, always for everyone, but so often it's not comparing ourselves to say, uh, what I'm doing is really complementary to that, or I, I too incorporate elements of that, or I'm doing this thing that I'm beginning to see emerge in that artist's work. We don't necessarily relate to the work of others in that way. We tend to look at someone else's work and say, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Mine sucks. <laughs> And it's not that simple. It's never that simple. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I, I'm just as guilty of that as that as others are, completely. Yeah, I think knowing that you're a part of something and you're, there's that beautiful thing of recognizing as an artist that you have lived this life, no matter how old you are or what stage or age you're at. You have this unique experience that informs your art, um, an experience that doesn't belong to anyone else outside of you, and that is enough. And that alone is a reason for you to be where you are, to be a part of that creative project, to be collaborating with those other creators, regardless of what age or stage they're at in their creative journey or their professional journey. What you have, what any one of us offers is unique. And the more specific we can be about that and the more we can own that and move through our creative journey, you know, with that in our hearts, we can override those questions and we can dialogue with those questions and respond with more confidence. Even if sometimes we're saying things about ourselves that, you know, not being as kind to ourselves as we'd be to someone else. Oh, interesting, interesting. And let's see. And Peter's saying, yeah, guessing that happens to everyone who's in the arts area in terms of figuring out the best group or people you are uh, to working with or that you want to work with. It's a journey, uh, like especially if we're talking about collaboration as well. That's, that's a very, that's another art form in itself, how to work with others, how to let people in, or in some cases, you know, where to draw your boundaries to you know, create space and distance and perspective so that you're not letting yourself take in too much. Um, and hey, Shelly, it was Lottie, just seeing you join. Thank you for joining the chat. So great to see you. And welcome to everyone else who might be joining in our live stream today or watching it after the fact. So great to have you here. Uh, we're having a really interesting conversation. Well, I'm, I think it's, I'm finding it really interesting uh, about creativity, learning, growth, how we measure ourselves, uh, our inner critic, I guess, that conversation coming back, weaving back in, that uh, what we do when we, like, feel, I guess it's also speaking to, um, it speaks to belonging and how we let ourselves belong, when we let ourselves belong, when will we be good enough to know that we belong? Do we need to be good enough at all? Do we just need to simply be? And Lottie, good to see you. Oh, interesting, Shelley. That's a really honest, you know, thank you for sharing that. The idea of what we share, again, talking to that vulnerability. Um, Shelley saying, I don't show my crafts unless I feel I'm ready for the judgments. So that um, kind of, that makes me feel, when I hear that, it makes me feel like there's kind of an armor that we put on sometimes. Um, not necessarily a bad thing, but when you're ready at that stage to show a picture or to reveal something you've created to people, and we, um, we arm ourselves a little bit, don't we? We kind of put up our force field so that if negative things come our way, they'll bounce off a little easier. They won't penetrate. I think that's a really normal thing to do. Um, 
and hopefully, I guess the hope is that the more you share and the more you realize that a lot of that negative, that anticipating the negative responses, the judgment coming our way, or assuming the judgments will be negative or are uh, destructive rather than constructive, hopefully what happens is over time you realize that that's not actually the case. That's just something we've been worrying about and it, it won't be that way. That's the finished not perfect uh, approach, isn't it? The idea of share it. The more you share, the less, you know, you become familiar with the voices. Um, that's a weird thing to say. What do I mean by that? I don't know what I mean by that. You can anticipate the responses, but you also begin to expand your circle knowing that circle of vulnerability because you know that the responses won't be negative. And when the negative ones come, I think you'll be prepared to engage with it rather than just to bounce it off, right? Oh, let's see, let's see. Shelly, ah, lovely. Uh, so, hello, Lori Nancy Kalamansky. So great to hear you. And I'm, yeah, you're saying preach, preach it. Yes, I think this conversation, all artists, take some time to, oh, whatever, regardless of whatever art you do, just let's take some time to honor the fact that we are in the game to begin with, that we are out here creating and making, making our voice heard, making space for other voices to be heard. I think every time we every time we participate, every time we get down to it and we just express ourselves, whether through song or music, sign making, lettering, writing, journaling, collaging, uh, filmmaking, whatever it might be, a doodling, scribbling, contour drawing, whatever it might be, every time we take time and make space for that, that's a victory. We're making space for ourselves. We're, you know, reminding ourselves that we matter. And, and perhaps that shines a light for other artists too to say that they matter too and that they can do the same thing, right? And a quote from, let's see, Brandon Jasper. Oh, Brandon, so great to see you. Brandon says, I'm so bad at working with others. That's interesting. I don't know if I, I don't, knowing you a little bit, I don't know, I think I might gently challenge that. I don't think you are. I wonder why you say that. Um, I, I can also say that you're probably not alone in feeling that way. Again. Our perceptions of what working with others is or what collaborating should be um, there's a lot of I think there's a lot of ideas about what that is without necessarily realizing that we also have a we can also help define the terms of collaboration what it means to us um, I'm in a process of working right now with Danny Crosby on the listening to our neighbors project so hey shout out if you live in a priority neighborhood in Oshawa please participate in our audio survey and share your stories about what it's like to live in your neighborhood, especially, uh, you know, all the things, the truths, but the beautiful truths as well that people don't have a chance to see. But uh, this project, we're, uh, I'm collaborating with Danny Crosby and she will be, they will be responsible for creating the visual art, the visual aspects of the art project and Reciprocity Media, Anthony and I will be working on the soundscape that accompanies it, drawn from the audio surveys that people participate in. And this this is my first professional collaboration with uh, a professional artist in this way. And there's a lot of things that I worry about. I worry that I won't be doing things as professionally as they expect, or I won't, um, you know, this is a person who's, you know, worked with galleries, uh, who's award-winning, lots of wonderful things. And so in my mind, I'm like, oh, well, who am I to work with this person? Will I be up to snuff? All these questions and doubts race into my head. And the truth is I, I, want, I want to be here. So what can I do to make that relationship easier? I can let them know how I like to work and they can do the same with me. Um, I'm going to be a little, I'm not, you know, I'm not a, a, like I don't necessarily do things in ways that make sense to other people. So I need to prepare them for how I work. I need to ask them to let me know if I do things that are frustrating or if they need things from me that I'm not giving them right now, anything to make, help make the project better, to make it the best kind of project it can be. So it's just recognizing that collaborations can look like so many different things. Um, the things, the ways I'm familiar with working with people, uh, that's just, you know, there's just, there's so many different examples and there's new ways of working that 
Well, they haven't been t tried out really because I think we also compare collaborations to corporate models of collaborating with one another and not necessarily creative relational ways of working with one another. Um, oh, sorry, I'm just getting this. Love this conversation, guys. And B, I think in response to Brandon is saying about that not good at working with others, maybe you need more practice. That's B for you. It's a good question. I mean, practice, does it make perfect or does it make easier? I'm not sure. Um, and Annie, the courage, well, this is a beautiful thing. If we can all give one another courage about creating and making our mark, sometimes it's just nice to be reminded that you're not alone. Um, sometimes it's just nice to know that whatever you're creating, it matters, right? Whether people have seen it or not, whether you've shared it or if it's just for you, just only meant for you, it still matters, it still exists in the world. And that's enormous. That's that's, we can never underestimate how extraordinary that is, that something exists that didn't exist before. That's beautiful. And, uh, oh, Laura also acknowledging, ah, interesting, also acknowledging the difficulty working with, working with others and special request and commission work. So there's that really interesting, that's an interesting conversation too. And perhaps for folks who do more of that work, you can speak to that what it's like to take commissions and the pressure you might feel when suddenly there's additional accountability involved. I know that when I'm volunteering at the living room, I feel much more comfortable than when I have a grant and I'm working at the living room and I'm getting paid by an external body. There's really very little difference when you look at it. One, I'm getting paid, which is really nice. The other, I'm not getting paid, but I feel for some reason freer to do the things that I love in the way I love to do them. So how can I bring those two things together to not assume I'm being judged um, for what I do in the way I do it? Because oftentimes when you have commissions, I think part of, I mean, I'd like to make the assumption that people are asking you to do this because they value you, they value your voice and they value the way you do things and what, how you create what you create. Um, so what is that, like, what are those expectations we're placing on ourselves, right? Um, that's, that's a really interesting, rich area of conversation for all artists. And I know visual art, it can be tricky sometimes. Um, or when there's a product involved, you want to please someone else. So there's that too. What if it doesn't work? What if they don't like it? What if they have special instructions or requests? There are little, you know, bringing someone else into your creative world, whatever that creative world might be. It can feel, it can feel a little um, dangerous is too extreme, but it does add a flavor of tension perhaps, right? And then I think as a performer, I can relate to that because we always, as an actor, that you're working with the director oftentimes, you hope. Uh, who has specific ideas of what they want from you or clients when I you know actors who are out there listening working on a commercial is its own unique experience and you literally become a product in the storytelling of another product and you're there to lift up that product and there are times in that process where my job is to kind of be a, a piece of furniture stand this way look this way smile this way Ask the actor to do this. Ask the talent to do this better. It's very strange, but you find, hopefully you find a relationship with the demands or the questions being put to you. Uh, let's see. Hello, Suzanne. Nice to see you. Yeah, and Peter, in the idea of collaboration, it can be difficult to find the people to connect with. Um, I don't know, folks, if you have suggestions about this as well, like how do you find your people? How do you find the person who will help lift up what you're doing, who will understand what you want? And like that is, that's a really, it's part of being an artist, I guess, isn't it? When do we let people in? How do we let people in? Part of it is knowing yourself, I suppose, and taking risks and knowing that not everything will work out the way you want it to, but as long as you can be honest with yourself and find a way of communicating effectively that you can work with that, right? And just never being afraid to ask, never stop searching, never stop seeking. If you have a feeling, a desire for what you want, 
the people who will help you do that are out there. Finding them is and can be a really exciting part of the creative journey, how you connect with them, right? And Shelley, let's see. Uh, Shelley's saying, when I did go to the living room, I did, oh, you did with the daycare children, that's right. And you were in the shadows. I need to come out of the shadows and be you when the living room is open again. That is a, wow, amazing. Yeah, coming out of the shadows and being you. I would say, I would suggest, Shelley, um, that maybe you're doing that. Maybe you've done that. You're doing it right now. You're out of the shadows. You're a part of the conversation. And when you share your work, when you reach out to connect with other people, like you are, you're out of the shadows. Maybe not physically out and that time will come, but you're doing the work. As a friend of mine, Kevin once said, you're doing the thing, you're doing the thing. And Prin, I think it was, ooh, belonging brother, belonging brother? I think it was belonging brother. I, need to, I might need to learn what that means. Uh, then being on the outside as my art is quite dark and I don't think most people get it. I've seen some of your art, I need to see more. I think even you, uh, a friend of ours was mentioning that there might've been an exhibit recently that happened or a project that happened. I'd love to see more of that. Um, that's a really interesting piece about the darkness of what we do, if there's darkness there and how will it be received by people. Um, Christine Weatherly comes to my brain when I think of this, uh, an artist and a living room peep, that sense of um, dark, darker arts, the Dark Art Society. Uh, I think there's an organization out there called the Dark Art Society that Christine's been letting people know about. Um, yeah, I guess the, the question, what are we, what are we afraid of? Uh, I think aesthetically, there are certain things that are accepted or more accepted in our society, at least uh, in the public eye, perhaps. Hmm. There are still so many different things that have yet to be celebrated and honored in the way they deserve to be. And in a way, I think of Peter with this too, that idea of, it, it's that area, that wonderful question of how do we connect with our, our communities? How do we connect with our audiences? And I wouldn't invite you or anyone else to do anything other or to be anything other than what you were, because that is like what you are right now is so, that's what makes your art what it is. So if it's dark, if it's deeper, if it's a little scarier for some people, that's an important journey for them to step into. Um, one of the things I love about art is that piece, that it's a willing engagement, that when people are ready to receive what it is holding, they will. And those who don't want to, who aren't ready, probably won't. And maybe this is just a part of that process of the world becoming more accustomed and learning more about how many different types of storytelling, artistic, creative storytelling there are out there and how we haven't been exposed to everything that we could have been. It's so exciting. It's such an exciting time. Um, but yeah, dark, dark art, complicated art is, it's not, you know, it's not always a thing that people want to hang over their couch, but it needs to be there in the world. And on that note as well, somebody's out there with a couch and they want your art to hang above it because it is everything they love and need and want in their life right now. Um, they just haven't, you know, they haven't had a chance. They've been out there waiting. They've been out there waiting, tired of the bright, fluffy, pinky, flowery stuff or whatever it might be, the sort of repeated trend of aesthetics. And they're, that's not their thing. And they're waiting for your art. They're waiting for your voice. They're waiting for everyone's voice. There's some, there's an audience out there for the work that each of us do. Finding it can be a little bit complicated sometimes. And Suzanne, going back to the piece of collaboration, likes working both with others and sometimes being alone with your art. I, I think I'm the same. I need that time to refuel, um, to learn about who I am and what I'm saying. Uh, and then I get kind of, uh, I begin craving, I begin, cr begin craving that voice, that external relationship it's but it's a good thing if you have a balance of both and sometimes it is just practice and becoming more comfortable with 
well, understanding that what other people think doesn't necessarily, it doesn't have to touch you. It doesn't have to get into your heart, right? And Bridget saying, I think I'm less worried about others' evaluation of my artwork now because I'm comfortable enough in expressing myself to know that their story of what my art is won't be the same as what my story of my art is. B, that is awesome. I'm gonna read it again because that's how awesome I think that is. Okay, I am less worried about others' evaluation of my art now because I'm comfortable enough in expressing myself, expressing yourself, to know that their story of what my art is won't be the same as what my, the story of my art is. That is, that is true. If I had a highlighter, I'd just draw on the screen right here to highlight that. That is it. We have a relationship with what we create uh, and everything that comes along with that. Other people will have their own relationship to what we create. And there's only so much we can do in leading them. I guess that's part of the creative journey as well. Do we want to lead them somewhere? Are we asking them a question we, we want to, them to engage with in a very specific way? There's only so much control we might have over that. And part of the beautiful, beautiful thing about art is that it will speak to them perhaps in a completely different way. Uh, it'll have a different voice for them. It'll hear, it'll, it'll sound differently. It might say different things than what it said to you as the creator. And maybe that's as it should be, right? That's again, what makes an artist an integral part of this process and why it's so beautiful to be able to involve the artist in conversation about the creative process rather than just having your work in the world, knowing where it came from, how it came into being is an extraordinary gift when, when the artist feels comfortable enough to share that. Um, it adds depth to certain things, but you, yeah, yeah, how you, the relationship you have with it, that's yours and yours alone, which can also be a gift. Um, the gift of that private relationship, relationship that you will have with your art always, and who you choose to let into that relationship. It gives you an opportunity to reflect and I suppose we, an opportunity for us to protect ourselves too from those people who may not understand yet. Um, we choose who we let in to that stage, to that part of the process. And, you know, we can only do so much, right? And Lottie is like, yes to Brandon. Practice makes perfect. So this is in the getting to like working with people. Practice makes perfect. I struggle socially, and throughout my school career, I struggled with working with others. But when I did my science course at sixth form, I had to I had to work with others when doing practicals. And the more I did practicals with others, the more confident I became. So, yeah, how just getting to know ourselves to feel comfortable enough, like in different situations, is enormous. I too, um, like I am an introvert who who struggles with. Uh, social anxiety and I think people assume because I run a studio because I do things like this that I am an extrovert but I am not uh, but I am I have become more comfortable being with people because I really want to be with people but also you I don't know you like we the practice piece it's it's not for practice makes perfect for me necessarily but it's practice makes comfortable and I can be who I need to be or want to be in any given moment. And I know it's not the end of the world. I know there'll be other opportunities and I can revisit certain things and certain things will revisit me. So just to be gentle with ourselves in that journey, right? And I think to also know that everyone else is experiencing a little bit of the same thing as we are. Uh, so in that, like recognizing that too that there's so much more common ground, unspoken common ground that we share with one another than we might realize. Uh, and I think everyone is a little bit nervous of those kind of things. How do we work? Especially if you're working with someone who might be difficult to work with. Maybe that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> yeah, and Shelly, you are doing it and you've done it. You're out there, out of the shadows and into this kind of light. And Prin, I think it's, Ah, uh, coming back to belonging. 
I think it's a belonging, which is nice to feel, as I feel my art is quite dark, and some do not know how to take it. I like that, though. Yeah, I, that's that rupture piece. The, the Oh, what is that quote? The quotes are not coming to me today. They're in my head swimming around, but all in different orders. Um, art that can make people feel uncomfortable. It's maybe meant, I mean, there's a purpose. That's something important. It should make people think. It should make people question. It should make people <gasps> take a moment, take a breath, step back, or perhaps want to get a little closer and dive into something that they're not comfortable with. But art, whatever kind of art it might be, whatever modality it might be, that is an excellent and safe and manageable way to do that, right? Much easier to explore something complicated and dark through an image than to throw yourself into its presence in real life. That is the gift, one of the gifts, one of the gifts that artists bring to the world is giving people that that middle ground to experience things, to communicate, to have complicated, awkward conversations about things. Um, art does that. And I think, yeah, owning that, owning that you're a part of that journey, rupturing, just, you know, tweaking the little things, making people, you know, in a playful, creative way saying, Step into this world for a little bit. See what it's like. You might learn something. <laughs> comfort the, comfort the, the quote, oh, the quote, um, art should, uh, comfort the, uh, B, I think you know this quote. Art should comfort the, disturb the comfortable and, uh, someone out there knows this quote. Throw it up there if you do, because it's stirring in my brain and it needs to come out. And B, I had the same thoughts upon working with Danny too. Oh, interesting, that's really good to know, thank you. Um, because you've just finished, or maybe are completing a collaboration with Danny and the RMG, the Robert McLaughlin Gallery. I had the same thoughts. I was Captain, Captain Imposter Syndrome for the first bits because who am I to collaborate with a celebrated award-winning artist? And then I was like, heck to the haters. Danny thinks I'm good enough. <laughs> Danny thinks I'm good enough to work with, so that's, That'll have to do. Yeah, and that's all you have to do is just be there with another person and create and do your best to communicate and work through anything that comes up and trusting in one another's abilities. There's a reason you're there. There's a reason Danny's there. And there's a reason I'm here and Anthony's there and Danny's here. And all these ingredients come together in really interesting ways. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Suzanne, I don't know why my heart symbol won't work but I loved that comment. Well, hearts to all the comments here. <laughs> hearts to all the comments. These, you know, what a great thing. They thank you for everyone who's here. Thank you for everyone who's joining us or tuning in after the live stream. I hope this conversation has been rewarding or is rewarding for you too. Um, or maybe it stirs up some questions or some things you'd like to challenge us on. Please feel free. If there's something uh, that I'm saying that doesn't click, or if there's something you're curious about, uh, drop me a line, send me a message or an email at info at livingroomcommunityartstudio.org and ask about it. I, like, I can't uh, underline how much I grow from these conversations, this creative dialogue we have together, how much I learn, uh, and I'm accountable as well, right? Part of our safe space policy. Everyone's accountable and all we can do is do our best to let folks know when there's something we need to learn, right? So keep me accountable, folks. And B, welcome in the new, new viewers. Excellent, excellent. And yes, uh, B, absolutely right. Art doesn't have to be beautiful to be art, I think. Um, and what's beautiful anyways? Like that is, what's beautiful? What does beauty mean? I think if each one of us spent time to answer that question, like, it means so many different things to so many different people. There is not one unifying definition other than perhaps how it makes people feel, which might be, it makes you feel good, or it makes you feel alive, or it makes you feel engaged or interested. Yeah, what is beautiful? I like the fact that we're actually in a time now where we're challenging 
uh, preconceived or accepted notions, cultural notions of what beauty is. Um, it's all got to change. That has got to change. It has not been helpful for a very, very long time, and it's been hurtful uh, to so many in the world, this idea that beauty is one thing um, and that everything should be that thing. No. We're redefining it. And that is a beautiful thing. Maybe awkward, complicated at some times, but that is a beautiful thing. <laughs> Challenging the very notion of what beauty is. Let's do it together, folks. Let's do it together. Oh, interesting. What a mood I'm in today. If this is my mood circle, whew, it is very full. <laughs> very full indeed. Oh, and Brandon thanking folks for the advice. That's lovely. And Brandon, again, it's, as someone, I've worked with you before. I think you're, you're lovely to work with. So just putting that out there, just putting that out there. And uh, Lottie shouting out, yeah, there's B, you're hitting some, you're hitting some good points here. And personally, B would like to do embroidery projects of illustrations from Grey's Anatomy, the bones and muscles and beautiful macabre of decay. B, yes, please, yes, please. And Prin, exactly, B, that's what I feel. So that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm just going with it and collecting new ways of working to add to my bag. Yep, love that. I love that too. Redefining what beauty is and why beauty is. That's another thing too. Like why is, you know, what is beautiful, but why do, why is it so important? Who has it been important to up to this point in time? Um, how has it been used to control or manage people or what they do or how they live? Just saying. There's some really interesting stuff there to unpack. And Michelle, welcome Michelle. How are you doing? Nice. <laughs> Michelle says, feel as though I joined at the perfect time. That's fantastic. Oh, and the conversation's about beautiful. Oh my goodness, I gotta catch up on these comments. I agree, art should make you look at things if even a little bit differently. There's this quote that goes, if a conversation makes you uncomfortable, it may be one worth having. I agree, I agree. And Teresa, what kinds of paint am I using? Um, today I'm actually using uh, watercolors. I know some folks have been asking about the brand that I use. I really use a whole bunch of different brands, but today one of my go-to kits is the Sakura kit. It's uh, just a little portable kit that has everything I need. I can really throw it in my bag and go if I want to. Um, because I'm really, I'm really hard on my art supplies. I just kind of toss them around and take them with me wherever I go. Um, so I need things that are durable and that can you know, take being dropped on the floor or thrown on a shelf. Um, but I love this little kit, it's fantastic. So, but just watercolor, just watercolor. And B, art should, ah, oh, thank you, thank you B. This is the quote that's been rumbling around my head. Art should afflict the comfortable and comfort the afflicted. Art should afflict the comfortable and comfort the afflicted. Now this is an interesting quote. Who be, do you remember who is there, uh, who is that accredited to? Do we know? Um, this is an interesting quote because I read it sometimes and I'm like, no, it shouldn't make people, feel, art shouldn't make people feel uncomfortable. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's, I don't think it's meaning I, I think it's not saying that art should make people, like, hurt people. Uh, but I think the role of art is to open new doorways, to invite people into areas that they may not be able to step into in their own lives, if left to their own devices. It's, art, art, whether it's any kind of storytelling, opens windows into new worlds. And not every window needs to have a view that is comfortable um, and familiar. And oftentimes when we step into that unfamiliar to learn a little bit more, as Michelle was saying, uh, to look a little bit differently, we, we learn, we grow, and growing, learning and growing isn't always comfortable. In fact, it's, it can be a little bit uncomfortable and exciting all at the same time. And Laura, oh yeah, it's a, another similar thing. Art should comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. So I think I've seen that quote in the two different ways. And Shelley saying, 
Oh, Shelley, I don't think I'm an artist. I just fool around creatively. And I see B gently challenging that as well. Sounds like your inner critic is being noisy. Or perhaps, what if I said, you know, when you're engaging in something in a creative way, that is your artist self coming out. You are being creative, you're, you're exploring and expressing something uh, in a way that is directly related to who you are and how you move through the world. So I would say that whether you like it or not, you're kind of being an artist, you're doing the artist thing. Now what you choose to do with that art, I think sometimes we consider art, and I, you know, forgive me if you've heard this before, but that idea of art being something that you do professionally, that you make a living off of, that you go to school for, la da 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 um, And that's one idea of what an artist is, someone who chooses to do it for their living or pursue it as a career. Um, I, again, have, I personally have a much broader idea of what being an artist is. And I think being an engaged, you know, being a human being demands us to engage with our artist self. It asks us, it invites us to draw out our inner artist in order to be a part of things in a, a, a healthy way, right? Because if we can't imagine other possibilities and if something in our life has happened to prevent us from even thinking of things in a creative way, we're just, again, we're telling someone else's story. We're walking and moving through the world in a way that someone else has told us is the way to do that. And that's not always, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just not necessarily our thing. So when I talk about being an artist, for me personally, it's about knowing and learning about who you are and what kind of stories are meaningful to you. And part of that process is identifying the stories that have yet to be told in the world. And those often have to do with who you are and the things that have yet to be voiced within yourself and recognizing this part of me, this story about who I am, why isn't it being told? Why haven't I shared it? Why, you know, it's worthy of, of existing in the world. So you might choose to write a letter, you might choose to write a song, you might choose to paint a rock, you might choose to do many things to tell that specific story. But as soon as you are engaging in that process, as far as I'm concerned, you're an artist. Planting a garden, right? Grafting a tree branch, um, exploring, <laughs> working towards a vaccine, all of these things, all of these things ask that we think of things and we engage in things in dynamic ways and we imagine, imagine possibilities, we imagine things existing that don't currently exist. And Lottie says, Shelley, you are an artist. I think if someone can express themselves in a creative way, then they are artists and you do that. There, Shelley just said that so much, uh, Lottie just said that so much more succinctly than I did. <laughs> thank you, thank you Lottie for that. <laughs> and I hope Lottie that everything's going well over there with you. I know last time, uh, last time we connected, you had some interesting new developments on the horizon, some new possibilities opening up for you in the fall. I hope everything is going really well and that you're feeling good. Let's see. And Peter saying, I am thankful that the living room still can do things like this to give a space to people to talk. Whew, you and me both, Peter. You and me both. And Shelly's thanking everybody. Yeah. Sometimes it like that's why we have these kind of conversations. That's why we do this. So we have opportunities to remind ourselves and the folks who might be listening right now and not joining in the chat, the people who are watching or listening later, you know, these might be things that they need to hear. There might be, they might be things that they needed to have affirmed within themselves. There might be journeys that they're beginning to embark upon now. Some of us, it takes a long time for so many different reasons, but some of us only really discover that we're capable and worthy of creating, you know, later in life, or it's things we put off, you know, when I'm finished school, I'll do this, or, you know, when I'm on vacation, I'll do this, or next weekend, or tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Um, 
we make time here to create and to have these conversations so it doesn't have to be put off so that we can prioritize even if only for a little bit of a little bit on a Wednesday afternoon or whenever you're watching this we can make space for ourselves and for our creative voice oh interesting question Shelley what is the difference between artist and being creative or is there a difference let's see I don't know I don't know if there is a difference it depends who you talk to I know artists professional artists who don't like being called an artist um, I think for me personally you can't have one without the other so if you're a creative person if you move through the world creatively you are owning and developing your artist self if you are an artist you need to have a relationship with your creative process in order to innovate and create and make the living you hope to make from putting out your creative products or results into the world so you can't have one without the other oh and here we go and this is coming from uh, I think I might know who it's coming from but let's see uh, Shelley there was a recent meme made where a raccoon was given a canvas and paint the raccoon had fun and put his her paws all in the paint and all over the canvas and created something true to his her experience it was fun and real and kind of beautiful the raccoon seemed to have a total blast is the raccoon an artist sure is the raccoon creative sure so maybe the two things go hand in hand <laughs> or hand in paw and maybe what makes an artist or what creative is comes down to our own definition and the tale we're telling in our piece we sometimes base the definitions on societal definition but society is whack sometimes our hearts are where the definition is best for us trust your heart I'm sure it's good <laughs> and uh, it says you're a heartist H E capital A capital R capital T I S T a heartist okay that sounded less cheesy in my head I love it thank you for that thank you for that <laughs> Post in as living room, thank you for that. It's like another voice, it's another living room, my alter ego coming out and visiting me there. How strange. And, and then it's, okay, there we go. This is Carlos, by the way. Facebook has logged me in as the living room, okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you wanted to be revealed, Carlos. But of course, that is, a, anyone who knows Carlos, that is pure Carlos encapsulated there. Per, like Carlos beauty, 100%. And Lottie's saying, things are going well, my end. Thanks for asking. Results day. <gasps> That sounds intense. Results day is in two weeks and I'll find out the results for my science course. Then I find out which university got into. So it's a waiting game for now. Whew, that is a waiting game. Um, fingers crossed, fingers crossed for you. Hopefully it'll go, I know it'll go well. It will all go well. And for B, so this is great, this conversation. Uh, oh, and, oh, Teresa, good question too. For B, for me, the difference between an artist and being creative is kind of academic between being an artist and being creative for me there are intertwined as we say at the studio being a human is creating yourself which to me is inherently an artistic endeavor yes and Teresa saying what's the difference between an artist and a crafter this is interesting okay uh, I have really great big debates about this and folks looks like we're gonna go overtime today sorry um, so for a long time craft and at least to my understanding and my experience has been used to describe things uh, that can't be fine art that shouldn't be considered fine art and sometimes it's the craftsperson themselves so perhaps a woodworker let's say who prefers to see what they're doing as a handicraft as something that is a skill they've developed over time but it's done in a specific way to create practical things and because it's creating something practical that are used, used in everyday life or used in ritual or you know some some kind of life-based experience it's not the same thing as art or f the idea of fine art which is exists purely because why not right um, when you create a beautiful table you use it as a table it may also be a work of art but 
it's not necessarily exclusively, it doesn't exist just for its own sake. It exists to be used. That is one definition. So there's people, crafts people who prefer for their work to be called that way. For me, I like, art, craft will always be art and crafts people will always be artists in my mind. And part of that is also because over time, the fine arts community has done a really good job at marginalizing uh, people who don't create in the way that they like or they want uh, things to be created. Um, and things for practical, developed for practical purposes, like a quilt, let's say, would be considered craft because it was a way of devaluing that creative expression. And when oftentimes those things, crafts things, folk art is another thing gets lumped into that category, outsider art, things that aren't necessarily created by people who would be embraced by the fine arts, the traditional Eurocentric fine arts community, um, these are things done by marginalized people. So people of color, uh, indigenous individuals and communities, uh, women, women everywhere, uh, so rarely included in the fine arts world, their products, their processes rarely acknowledged because, well, that's just something that they do. And so it's time for me personally to reclaim arts into the art, the crafts into the art world, to recognize the value, to recognize the things that we've borrowed or sometimes, especially settlers, appropriated from uh, people who were only allowed once, only called, uh, exclusively referred to as craftspeople at the best of times. It's time to acknowledge what we've learned from them, the debt that we owe them creatively. Uh, culturally, spiritually, because so much of what they've created over time, so much of what's been created and left unacknowledged has been absorbed into our fine arts aesthetics and practices, to absorbed into the way we live our lives. And um, I'm sure as someone, because you are, you are Mexican, so you see this more often, I imagine that a lot of other people, that so many of the things in your culture um, have been absorbed into other people's, like into settler populations in North America, especially this idea of something, uh, we don't appreciate the roots. We don't go back and track back to where it's come from and who's been creating it and who's introduced us to this art form. Um, and we need to. So that's why I consider craftspeople artists. And if someone wants to refer to what they do as handicraft or craft, that's fine, but I will, see it as art. I will always include them in the creative conversation about being an artist. So that's the, uh, that's that. And B, yes, ugh. So many problems with the idea of craft versus art because I feel it's inherently gendered, absolutely, because so many, especially fiber-based arts, right, right B, are considered for women. Um, and Brandon, I love to woodwork. I consider it an art form for sure. Exactly, yes. Um, so I think it's time, we've been seeing this conversation happen for a long time about breaking down the barriers between the world of crafts and the world of arts and the world of fine arts and just paying, you know, honoring the contributors that have come before us, honoring the creators that have come before us and recognizing that they're an essential part of our creative world. And especially, I think, in many cases, if it's used as a part of our daily life, as ritual, um, if it helps us get through our daily life, why wouldn't that be art? And why can't everything, um, as many things as possible, that we use in every day be considered, like be created in that way with that spirit? What if, what if we, what if that was something we honored? Um, I'm reading a beautiful book right now, and I do know that I have to wrap up sooner rather than later, but there's a beautiful book that I've started reading called uh, Braiding Sweetgrass. Now, I can't remember the author's name off the top of my head, an indigenous uh, author, but also a scientist. So this book is honoring indigenous wisdom and medicine and tradition and tying it in and uh, to contemporary versions of science and within the world we live in. It's a really beautiful book, but these kind of conversations, I'm being reminded of them, they're echoing as I'm reading this, this idea of the strange social constructs, constructs that we've built up between things to silo things and to silo people as well, break people apart from one another. Um, it's time those barriers came down and it's time we took time to understand where everything comes from and to appreciate how precious these things are. 
so that we don't accidentally trample them or destroy them. <laughs> uh, it's possible. It's possible to have that balance with ourselves and within the world. Mm. Marry the practical with the beautiful in all we do. Yes, be yes. And crafts are awesome art. I will say that again. Crafts are awesome art. Thank you, B. Oh boy. Folks, thank you for today. What a fantastic, fantastic conversation. Um, last week, I forgot to post a follow-up picture for people to share the work that they were doing. If you wanted to share projects that you're working on uh, during this live stream or perhaps at other times, if there's stuff you want to share, but I will follow up today. And as I'm finishing this last little bit, why don't I focus in um, and get a close up of what I'm working on here. I'm having fun with this new tech that Anthony's developed for me, which is in its own way an art. I mean, well, of course it is everything that he's designed to help do this. So shout out to Anthony. Um, and I'd also like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is something I wanted to invite everyone if you haven't already done this and you don't have to, I'm not the boss of you. Um, but we will be releasing, we've started sharing all of our Instagram, the, the live stream chats that we've been doing, uh, except for a few that we will be revisiting with the artists coming up. But all of them that we've archived for the last few months, months, they are up on YouTube, our YouTube channel now. So if you're interested in if you missed some of those live stream chats and you'd like to watch or listen to them, uh, they're up there for you now. And we will also be releasing um, all of these, all of these live stream hangouts that we've been doing right from the very, very beginning. So what a journey that's been. It's been fascinating to kind of check in and see how the world's changed and everything has changed and for better, for worse, for, you know, the growth has been remarkable and uh, even though things are still scary I am feeling more optimistic than I ever have before more in love with humanity than I ever have before um, some days it's easier than others to be in love but I wanted to let everyone know that's up there and if you if you like doing the YouTube thing um, if you haven't already done so, I am going to shamelessly ask that you go over uh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're only, uh, I think, a few subscriptions away from passing the 200 mark and we're just, we're loving building our community there and it's another way for us to connect and um, so if you do like YouTube and you want to subscribe, I would surely love that. That would be beautiful. Um, if not, that's okay too, but if you like YouTube, go subscribe check it out, let us know what you think. And that's something we can do too. I know there are a lot of other creators hanging out in these live streams with us. If you want, if you have your own creative channels that you'd like to share with the community on YouTube, please feel free to share them here. Like put the links in the descriptions or in the after post where we have the after chat where we show and tell what we've been working on. Let us know where you share what you love making, whatever it might be. And uh, I'd love to get the word out and help support all of you fine creative folks and what you're doing. You can also share your Instagrams or, you know, Tumblrs or Discord links, things like that. I know there are a lot of ways people like to connect. And they're, they're fabulous. I love that we can do this. I love that we can do this. All right. Last. Ooh. My tremors. Hello again, tremors. But yeah, you can certainly catch up if you've missed some that you'd like to catch up on. They're all in one place, all on YouTube. I think we haven't shared the live streams yet. That's on my to-do list for this afternoon. But there we go. So that's a work in progress. I think I'm going to keep working on that a little bit more as I do. But I like where that's at right now as the color of my day. A lot going on there. Huh. And there'll probably be more before I'm done. Everybody, thank you so much for joining. Let's just see, catch up on the last little things. Oh, lovely. So, oh, wow. Well, thank you for everyone. 
Uh, lots of nice things coming through. Thanks for the conversations. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I know it's been great and that's because of you. So everyone, thank you for this. Um, otherwise it's just me talking to myself here and it's not nearly as interesting. I do it all the time. Trust me. Um, thank you folks. Thank you for joining. And uh, Laura is so great. I'm glad you're, oh, I'm glad you're here today. And, uh, I'm glad everyone's been here. Shelly says, great pop-up art studio day. Thanks, Mary, and everyone for some awesome conversation and the love of community. So important, so beautiful. That's what we're trying to do here, folks. That's what we're trying to do. And B saying thanks for everyone's contributions to this conversation and for watching these. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. It's so great to feel a part of this ongoing conversation with the community. I, can, I couldn't agree more, B. This is... I feel really honored that we have this platform, this ability to connect. And I can't wait again until we can do it again in person. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, but until then, of course, uh, until we can connect and create with one another again in person, I look forward to connecting and creating with you right here online uh, every Wednesday, 2 to 3.30, or maybe a little bit past 3.30, depending. Every Wednesday we'll be here with a live stream pop-up for you, okay? Uh, unless it's a holiday or I'm sick or something, and then I'll let you know. But just keep coming back on Wednesdays and we'll see how it goes. And thank you again for everyone else who might be watching after the live stream has ended. If you're watching the archived version, thank you. And like I was saying, if you haven't already visited our YouTube page to check in on past projects that we've shared, other videos and uh, live streams and interviews and things like that, please do. You'll find us at the Living Room Community Art Studio on YouTube and uh, you can subscribe to us and help us build a great community there as well. So thank you so much everyone and Carlos with the thank you as well and thank you to everyone for your contributions and for being here <laughs> Carlos managed to sign in as Carlos again which is good thank you it's great <laughs> um, thanks to all the students who are watching and again just a reminder that we only have our wonderful placement students for another couple of weeks so please visit our Facebook page and check out some of the interesting and exciting activities they're doing as well man I've asked so much of you in these last few minutes I hope that's okay but you know what? Let me know if it's too much. That's part of the conversation too, isn't it? Thank you for being here and I'll see you again real soon. Uh, specifically next Wednesday, back here with the live stream. Everyone take care, love yourselves, be kind to one another. Bye.